Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you what I think is the best way to plan and then build a custom village, town or city in Minecraft. Now I am no stranger to building custom villages in this game, I have made my fair share through the years. Some I'm really proud of and others were before a time when I really got into building. But for each and every one of my settlements, I have planned and built them in pretty much the exact same way. So the first step that I do is decide on what style I would like to build in. Medieval, fantasy, renaissance, oriental, so on and so forth, you get the idea. If you're not sure on which architecture style you would like to build in, I'd recommend heading to the World Wide Web and having a look around for some ideas. You can literally google something as simple as architectural styles and go from there. Also, just want to mention that you don't need to build a village in one certain style. This is a sandbox game, you can do whatever you want, and what you may want to do is make a hybrid of several different styles. That's what I did here for my desert city. It's a mashup between Egyptian and Arabic architecture, and then just some very vague desert style houses. But if you want to go for realism and stick to one style, that's cool too, just be prepared to do some research. Once you've chosen the style or styles you're building in, the next step is to make some mock-ups in a creative test world. And what I mean by that is just build a couple of nondescript houses in the style that you're going to be using. This way you can get a better idea of how you're going to be building everything else in the village and you'll know for sure if it's the right style for you. If it doesn't go well at first, don't be discouraged, especially if it's a style you're not used to building in. I know for a lot of the villages I made when I first start, I begin to second guess my idea, but if you keep persisting and experimenting with lots of different blocks, shapes and textures, I'm sure you'll get something you're happy with eventually. So now we have got a style to build in, along with a few ideas of what the buildings are actually going to look like. The next step is to head into the world that you're going to be making this in and pick out a location to build it in. When you're choosing a spot for this, you want to try and envision how it's all going to look when it's done. So look at the terrain and try and think what would you build where. Let's say you've got a mountainous region. Are you going to be building on the mountain itself or at the bottom and use the snowy peaks as a backdrop or maybe a little bit of both? Also take notice of the smaller aspects in the terrain and how you can incorporate them into a build. If you've got a river running through it for example, you could definitely utilize that. So just stand back and let your imagination go wild with ideas. Something you may also want to do is neaten up the area you've chosen to build in, so filling in any ugly holes, getting rid of tall grass and any trees that may be in the way. This is just so you have a cleaner canvas to start building on. The next thing I want to talk about is something I don't actually use for all of my villages. I've made them with and without using this trick. Some of you will think this is super helpful and others maybe would find it more of a hindrance. I am somewhere in between. The idea is that you fully plan out where everything is going to be built in the village using some sort of outline block, usually a colourful block like concrete or wall. So you would mark out all of the pathways, the houses and the rest of the buildings as well as any walls if you have them. I did this for my fishing village here and I would say it was more helpful than not because it did give me a pretty good idea of where everything was going to go and I knew the layout and what it was going to look like. However, I don't think I needed it exactly. That's mainly because of the usual way I construct my villages, which is in a set order. So of course, by all means, go ahead and plot the layout of your village if you think it would be of help, but if not, just skip that step like I usually do. As I said, there's usually an order as to how I make my villages. The first thing I will always build is the main buildings, houses and whatnot. After that, I will connect them all up with pathways. Then I will go around and add in some landscaping, such as custom trees and gardens. And last but not least, I will add in all of the smaller details like carts or lampposts, for example, and any other touch-ups I need to do. Now, me saying it like that makes it sound like a really quick process when in reality, it's probably going to take a very long time and require lots of patience. 
Of course, it kind of depends on the size of your village. What I would recommend doing if you're planning to make a settlement that is on the larger side of things, split it up into sections. So you would work on one part first of all, doing all of the buildings, then the pathways, then the landscaping, and lastly the details and any finishing touches, and you would complete it entirely before moving on to the next section and linking the two together. This is going to drastically help with possible burnout and loss of motivation, because if if you're going to make a big town or city and you build it in this order without splitting it up, you're probably going to get bored of doing the same thing. On the other hand, if you're just building a very small village with a handful of houses, you could probably do it all at once. It's kind of up to you to be the judge of that. Before we end the video here, I would like to go into a bit more depth with each part of the order that I've been describing. So first up is the buildings. Something I would recommend doing with the builds for a village is planning them in a creative test world beforehand, like the mock-ups. Having a creative world to practice your building in is a great way to improve and really fine tune your builds. You don't have to do this for every single build, there may be some smaller houses you can build off the cuff once you've gotten more comfortable with the style that you're using, but as somebody who plans pretty much everything in a creative world beforehand, I cannot recommend it enough. It's like my number one tip for getting better at building. When it comes to the placement of the houses, you will want to think about how close or far away you want them from each other. You may want to have a really close quarters feel to your village where a lot of the houses are virtually pressed up next to each other, or on the other hand, you might want to space them out a bit more, leaving it much more open. I guess it kind of depends on the style that you're going with, just something to think about. Another aspect to mention is the differences in all of the buildings. Beforehand, you may want to decide if you would like the builds to all look very similar or have a lot of variation. So think about block palettes, the size of the builds, the shape of the builds, the roofs, all that sort of thing. It's just good to have an idea before you get really deep into the project. Once you've done all of the builds, you can then go around with whatever blocks you're using for the pathway and connect them all. Try to keep the path sizes varied. Some should be much wider and others more so like an alleyway going in between buildings. You just want to make sure you're varying them up slightly. Unless you're building some sort of modern city, you probably don't want to make your pathways super rigid. Having the pathway naturally flow with the terrain is probably best. The way I like to think about it is as though this was a real village and there were real people walking around, what routes would be taken and where would everybody be walking? Trying to think about that when deciding on the pathway layout. Once you've got all of your buildings and pathways in, hopefully there should be some spots left over for landscaping. This is when you can fill in those open areas with trees, ponds, bushes, rivers, all that sort of thing. Or very simply, just some tall grass that you can grow with bone meal. It's better than nothing. My absolute favourite part of building villages is adding in all of the details in and around the town at the end. I actually have a video showcasing some village decorations that may be helpful, but if you need more than what's in that video, just have a look around elsewhere online for some other ideas. There are some details that you can add that will help bring a load of life to your village, such as carts for example. Basically any small details that would move if someone was there to interact with it. I remember watching a video from Fwip where he was talking about this specific part of building villages and the way he thought about it was just perfect. Basically, it's when you're adding all of these details in, you want to build it as though it's a busy and bustling village with villagers all walking around doing what they would usually be doing in an average day. And then all of a sudden, everybody disappeared. Thanos snapped out of existence and then time froze. You are trying to build what that would look like. So that, everybody, is how I plan and build my custom villages in Minecraft. I hope it was helpful. I've really been enjoying making this type of video where I teach you all how to build, so if you've got any aspects of building that you would like my advice on that I can then turn into a video, please let me know down in the comments. But that is going to be it for this one. I really hope you enjoyed. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.